you see people probably even in your own business like I'm an entrepreneur what does that mean to you like I think it's cool if it encourages people to be creative and to to, to try out to start businesses and stuff but What's your thoughts on the buzzword in the... To be honest, in my opinion of an entrepreneur is, a true entrepreneur is actually a really crap business person. Mm, Okay. And the reason being is that if you say I'm an entrepreneur, right, and that's okay to be that, and I don't even know if I am one, right, Mm. but the the entrepreneur sort of gets excited about the idea. They get excited about the concept. Mm. And they go, I'm going to create a, you know, a timber coaster, right? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and they get so excited about the logo and the pretty stuff and the and the, the creation of, of their idea and their concept that they that they don't want to do the things that actually matter in business, which is understanding the numbers and the, the business model and actually the, the, the so-called boring stuff. Mm-hmm. So a true entrepreneur does this. They go, oh, my God, I'm excited about this idea. I'm going to go for it. I'm do- doing the idea. Oh, look, there's another bright light. Oh, I'm going to go over here. Because in actual fact, it's actually not the... It's like when you climb a mountain, right? The exciting thing is to buy the backpack and get the new shoes and off you go. And then the hard yards is climbing it up. Mm. And the hard yards is when it's a really rainy day and it's slippery and it's not fun anymore, yeah. right? There's no fun in it. Mm-hmm. And then you get a bit higher and the, 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 the rocks become to rubble and suddenly you're really not having fun. Mm. A lot of people don't get to the top because mm. it's just not fun. They just like the idea of it or they like the idea of the, the pretty stuff of the logos. They don't want to do things like the, the boring stuff which is numbers. Numbers are far too complicated and yeah. boring, you know. Or set up a proper trademark or, you know, hire the staff and put the time in or make sure the policies are correct. You know, that, for a, can't someone else do that? Yeah. Like, and so quite often, often most businesses don't work because people aren't prepared to do the hard yards and the hard work. Mm. And it's actually the unknown, the non-fun stuff yes. that actually makes a business successful, the not necessarily. non-Instagrammable posts. Correct. It's yes. like people saying, I want to do strategy. I mean, what does strategy mean? <laughs> it's honestly, if you turn around and say, if you turn around and say, I want to do strategy, it's bullshit. Strategy can be done in three and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. You know where the stra- well, you know what the strategy is. It's the hard yards. It's a 99.5% which is the grind and the work mm. that actually gets it done. It's staying up till 3 o'clock in the morning every day mm-hmm. to make sure it's done. It's making sure that you're constantly attacking yourself and looking at your best weapon that you've possibly got, which is your mirror, to actually make sure that you can be the best you possibly can be. Mm. And actually being... Um, and, you know, going, doing that hard thing of, you know, moving people on if they're not working and, you know, putting... That's all the hard stuff that people don't like to do. Yeah, it's so true. That's, that's my concern about buzzwords and like trends at the moment when people are trying to put tags and labels on themselves. It's like, what kind of identity or significance are you trying to get from that? Mm. Are you actually producing the results? Like when you did Boost, right? When you started Boost when you were 31, um, did you have in mind that you wanted to think... Were you thinking globally straight from the start? Mm. As I said to you earlier, um, naivety played a huge part. So mm. I suppose I turned around because we opened 150 stores in four years. That's huge. <laughs> and if I, if someone came to me right now, knowing what I know, and said to me, Janine, I'd like to open a, a juice bar, and in four years I'd like to be able to open 150 stores. And by the way, I've got no business experience, never done this before, never hired anyone before, and um, and I don't know the difference between debit and credit. I'd say, nice idea, four years, you know, try and aim for about maybe five stores, but you've got to get the first one right, maybe work on that for two years, da, da, da. So no one ever told me that. So because no one told me that, I just did it. Yeah, wow. So I just, every single day I worked out a way of doing it. So I, you know, we had rules. Like um, I had to open an enormous amount of stores and I told people we can't count because if we can't count how many stores we've got to open, it would be too overwhelming and we wouldn't do it. So what do we have to do today to make sure those stores open on time? Mm-hmm. So in actual fact, my life went really quickly because I was always working six months in advance to make sure that the, the stores that was opening in December and we're talking in June mm. were on time. And well, I had to do things today in June to make sure December stores open. So it was that constant, you know, I was constantly creating systems, processes, balancing policies, 
you know, and I'd never done that before. Mm. But I got it wrong. How do I make sure I don't get it wrong again? Did you love it? Did loved you find it. That, oh, wow. That's loved what... it. Loved mm. it. Hated it. Scary. Exciting. Mm. It was every emotion you possibly can, you know, mm -hmm. throw in. It was days that I didn't want to play. Yes. Yeah. I was a mother of three kids at the same time. <laughs> you know, my, my youngest one was seven months old, right? Wow. So he was still breastfeeding, you know. So that's when I started Boost. So I was running that. I was running my life. I didn't have time for networking. I didn't know, I didn't know if the business was going well or not because I had nothing to compare it to. Mm. I just was on this, you know, really cool journey called Boost. Yeah, wow. And I think you're pretty relational, right? So like with businesses, did you reach out to certain businesses and sit down with them and ask, hey, how do you do this? Or Yeah, there was a couple of times. I never really networked as such. I never had mm. any groups or because I was far too busy. But I would call, um, so there was a guy called James Fitzgerald who ran Muffin Break, which was Muffin Break was really big back then. Yeah, I remember that. And so I had a coffee with him and said, look, what are your thoughts? And so, he, you know, so, so I basically bought people coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, a girl called um, Leslie Gillespie from Baker's Delight, you know, she came in and um, I bought her a coffee and we were catching up and she was very helpful in the early days. Wow. And I was, what I was trying to do is learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah. You know, what can I know? So, that, so, you know, people I really respected who'd been on the journey before, mm -hmm. you know, really took that advice. And then I think when we had about 15 stores, um, you know, a guy called Jeff Harris came into the business who had co-founded Flight Centre. Lovely, lovely man. Man who came in and, and you know, he very much helped guide me on the on the journey. Mm. If, we, if I could bring the 31 year old Janine here and you're here with your knowledge for all the years you've done, what kind of things would you tell her? I would tell her go for it and I wouldn't tell her anything and the reason being I wouldn't tell her anything is because she's got to work it out herself. Mm -hmm. She's got to make the mistakes. You know there is no question, I'd say you know mate go for it and, um, and uh, make sure you look after yourself. Yeah, okay. Yeah, mm. but I certainly wouldn't tell her you know, what was ahead yeah, because, wow. because Janine would freak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, she yeah. would go, no, nah, that's just too hard. Um, I think the, the key thing is that you know, people often ask me the question of what went wrong and what would you change? Mm. And the answer to that question is that lots went wrong, but nothing I would change. Yeah. Because in actual fact, you have to actually embrace it mistakes and brace the journey to actually be who you are and yes. I like who I am yeah. you know, and I like where the business is that's but awesome. it was, it's all the things that went wrong that made the business where it is today yes that's all, so good what are the common mistakes that people bring to Shark Tank and with wanting seeking investment because one of the things I personally saw was people tend to over evaluate their business mm. um, value and worth I, I saw that particularly last season a lot mm. it's like well how did you get that number mm. from six months of running yeah so what's your thoughts i think what people got to understand is that you know if, if you're asking for money from anyone it's it's people overcomplicate business it's actually mm. not simple it's not sorry it's not simple it's it's not complicated mm. so if you can with numbers right so people often push numbers aside and i'll get to your question in a minute yeah, yeah. um is that if you can add minus divide and multiply you can do numbers mm -hmm. right it's just no it's not that hard and you're Business is quite simple. You need to make more income than you do expenses. Mm. There is no more, it's not more complicated than that. And you've got to make, have less expenses than, than business. You've got to grow every year. So going back to the valuation is, you've got to also understand that if someone gives you $100, that's 100 of real cash. That's not just fantasy fairy money, right? Mm. And so they want a return. Yes. So they want to return not in 100 years when they're you know, too old to enjoy it. They want to return in a period of time which is re reasonable. Mm. So when you value your business, you have to actually go, if I'm asking for $100 from someone, when can I return that $100 to them plus the, the multiple on that money? So how do I return $300 back to that person? Mm. So then if you've been going six months and you say to that person that I want my business to be valued at a million dollars, so you need to give me, you know, $200,000 for your 20%, mm -hmm. then that's, then you're not asking, you're not asking yourself the right question is how are they going to get that money back? Yes. Because that is all that matters. Mm -hmm. So when you value your business, you really have to look at that. How are good are people with their numbers? Are they actually keeping track of their records? No, ge generally people go, I go back to the entrepreneur question and people mm. go, I love the, they love the, they'll spend 
five hours on the a color of a logo yeah. and they'll spend five minutes on the structure of their business mm. right so or that you know so people love people lean towards what they love mm. but what I'm telling should tell people is learn to love your numbers because your numbers are your story mm-hmm. your numbers is where you you know the the logo won't get you there and the numbers will yeah and so really get to love the minutia Mm. of your business is there any resources or uh, books that you could recommend people to read to learn to structure the business better or to yeah look there's some great books out there you know there's you know Vern's book of scaling up mm-hmm. not only he he's got a book but he's also got some tools on his website which you can go to great there's the accidental entrepreneur which is my book yes yeah, so plug um <laughs> you know there's, there's some great blogs out um, and podcasts yes. out there now that they never used to be. So, you know, you're in a car. You can actually sit and listen to, you know, Rock Sport and Comedy on Triple M or, you know, get a blog. Yes. Or get a podcast that you can actually listen to in the car. So you can always have that curious mind of what can I learn and who can I learn off. Mm, that's awesome. Um, and last question, Janine. Um, where are you going now with, with Boost and with Zoo Retail? You've got so many businesses that you've got your fingers in. Where would you like? Where do you have a clear idea, or you got an idea of you're going to keep expanding with what you're doing? Look, you're... you know, I'm I'm trying to work out what I want to be when I grow up. You know, oh well, wow. I don't quite know yet. Um, <laughs> the you know, so boosters, you know, boosters are always in my blood, and my boost will be part of me forever. Mm. Um, but you know, what else? I've got you know other businesses I brought on Shark Tank and outside of Shark Tank that I, I work with. Um, you know, just trying to just be the best person I can be. So mm. yeah, just trying to work out what I want to be. That's awesome. Not, not sure yet. I like that. That's awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Jenny. My pleasure.